actually happen with Building 7? Like, that is weird, right? It doesn't, like, what is right, that? Right, If you were to say something like that on television, they'd flip out. You know, I've spent the last 80 years defending dropping nuclear weapons on civilians. Like, are you joking? Right. That's just like prima facie evil. Yeah. If you can't, well, if we hadn't done that, then this, that, the other thing, that was actually a great savings. Like, no, it's wrong to drop nuclear weapons on people. Just that to be clear, like... people did land on the moon. I don't know. Okay, there we go. I don't know. Why is the CEO of Daily Wire trying to gaslight people into thinking the phrase Christ is King is an anti-Semitic dog whistle while he refers to himself as the God King? Shouldn't he spend a little more time self-reflecting on how sacrilegious it is to call yourself a God King because you own a company? No, actually he's too busy trying to shame Americans and say that you hate America if you question things like 9-11, the moon landing, or even dropping nuclear bombs on innocent civilians seems like he was taking a jab at tucker carlson for saying that what's going on everybody today we're going to talk about ceo of daily wire jeremy snoring <sighs> boring because he's now gaslighting people into thinking if you question the moon landing you hate america if you question 9 11 you hate america and if you question american wars like dropping nuclear bombs on innocent civilians in his own words uh well not really in his own words but he said dropping nukes on Hiroshima, etc. If you question any war policy, 9-11 or moon landing, you hate America. That's what Jeremy Snoring is uh, doing because nothing says loving your country like blindly trusting everything the government does and shaming everybody who has honest questions. He's really taking veiled threats at Tucker Carlson and Candace Owens, who of course he can't compete with in any sort of way. And today I'm going to show you how Jeremy Snoring and Gwen Shaquero are just total frauds who are trying to now gaslight you into thinking asking questions is a bad idea. And also just a lot of stuff going on. I think there's a lot here that I want to talk about. And I want to put on a masterclass and show you guys how people like Jeremy Boring, they call everything anti-Semitic and they even want you to believe that Christ is King is an anti-Semitic dog whistle. But I think it's time to start. If he's going to ask what's anti-Semitic, it's time for us to ask what is Antichrist and is, is Jeremy of the Antichrist spirit and the Pharisee spirit. God bless you guys. Dreamer podcast starts now. Give me a thumbs up for the algorithm and throw one in the chat too so I know everything's gravy. It's the Dream Rare Podcast. Welcome to the show. The way to get the news at the desk or on the road. Let's go. God is great and success in our control. The world is crazy, but we get better from obstacles. Yeah. What's going on, everybody? Welcome to the Dream Rare Podcast. Somebody said Elon responded to my ex post. Really? That's crazy. Let me, I got to look real quick. Hold on. Elon responded to my post. What did he say? Hmm. Let's look. Did I read this headline right? Oh, damn. That's crazy. Elon said, you know, the Joker is running things when law abiding citizens are being prosecuted by the government for not hiring criminals. Insert sheets pun. Dang, that's so lit. All right. Yeah, Elon literally just responded to me two minutes ago because there's this headline that says that Sheets Inc. I'm just going to read it real quick. That's I'm kind of I'm kind of shocked. Anyway, uh, Sheets Inc. discriminated against black, Native American and multi multiracial job seekers by weeding out applicants whom the company deemed to have a failed criminal background check, according to U.S. officials. I posted it. I said, did I just read this headline right? And Elon responded, you know, the Joker's running things when law abiding citizens are being prosecuted by the government for not hiring cr criminals. Insert sheets pun. Crazy. I mean, that's just shows you what the internet could do. Stay in school, kids, or or don't, and try to make a social media page. I'm just kidding. But anyway, um, I don't know. That threw me off a little bit, but show must go on. Appreciate it. Is, is everything good? The sounds good. All right, let's let's get it cracking. There's some hold on one second. I, there's like some guy talking about pleasuring himself on YouTube. I mean, I gotta block this guy. I apologize. Hopefully, you guys can laugh at this little moment here hold on a second <laughs> he's kind of creeping me out in the comment section hold on where do, uh, okay i'm trying to block the jeff guy he's he's acting weird and just spamming i am jeffrey where is it hold on <laughs> all right whatever I, that's enough distractions let's get to the story appreciate you guys all right so I just want to read you this post that Jeremy Snoring we're going to call him Jeremy Snoring because uh, his his real name I guess is Jeremy Boring and, you know, I think that's a sign of life if your name is boring. It's like, wow, look how interesting this guy is. Now he's boring. But I think it's funnier to call him Jeremy Schnoring. So Jeremy Schnoring. 
He posted this and went viral on Twitter this morning. He said, people who deny the moon landing or suggest America is evil for its use of atomic weapons against Imperial Japan or who say that George Bush was behind 9-11 actually hate this country. Yeah. Yeah. You just, you know, denying the moon landing. There's no way you could like America if you think the moon landing wasn't real. And if you think we shouldn't drop nuclear weapons on Japan or, you know, say George Bush had something to do with 9-11, you just... You just hate America. Here's something that I realized recently with like Ben Shapiro and now Jeremy Boring or Jeremy Schnoring's doing it or Jen, what is it, Jennifer Shapiro, whatever her name is or his name is. I don't want to misgender whatever that is, that little guy there. But, um, you know, they're they're doing this weird thing where they're, they're not saying it, but they're like, if you question things, well, I guess Ben is saying it, I'll play the clip, but if you question too much, like you, you hate America or you're just, you, why are you asking all these questions? Here's a clip of Ben Shapiro for 40 seconds shaming people who are, quote, just asking questions, compiled with a compilation I made myself, you're welcome, of Ben Shapiro trying to shame black people and Hispanic people into injecting themselves with the COVID vaccine. So maybe little Jennifer Shapiro should have been asking more questions instead of acting like a pseudo faux intellectual like he always does, acting like he's so smart when he should be asking more questions. So let's just play this real quick. It's time. Right, this is the game that is played by so many corrupt commentators just asking questions. I don't have to show you evidence that something terrible is happening. I don't have to actually demonstrate how the thing is happening. I don't have to tell you who the problem is. Wink, wink. But I can just tell you right now that there is a problem. But even if, and, and if I'm asked about it, hey, I'm just asking questions. I think that you don't care enough to know or know enough to care. I think that the vast majority of people who are in the just asking questions business have an answer that they want to suggest, but they know there's no evidence for it. So instead they hide behind just asking questions. In other words, they're completely full of shit. And we have seen a tremendous amount of vaccine hesitancy, unfortunately, in the black and Hispanic community. Okay, black America, only 67% of black Americans say they definitely will get the vaccine or probably get the vaccine. So the black community has tremendous vaccine hesitancy. Okay, that is a real problem. The people who should be ripped up and down right now are people like Louis Farrakhan, who's literally going out there and telling his millions of followers, that the COVID vaccine is a vial of death. Have you seen any co media coverage of this? If a, if a major conservative figure who had met with a bunch of members of Congress were out there literally telling people that the COVID vaccine was a vial of death, you know that would be at the front of every single newspaper, right? Conservatives deny vaccine efficacy. And yet here was Louis Farrakhan doing just that. Democratic members of Congress have met with this guy. They continue to meet with this guy. Have you seen a headline? Oh my gosh, listen guys. Oh my gosh, I can't believe Louis Farrakhan is telling people to take not to take the vaccine. Oh my gosh, black people aren't taking the vaccine. Oh my gosh. And then like two years later, he's like, oh, everybody just wants to ask all these questions. Why is everyone asking questions? Oh, you have questions? You're just asking questions? Shut up, Gwen Shapiro. You should be asking more questions because when you act like you know everything, you end up trying to shame two races into getting the vaccine. Black and Hispanics, black and Hispanics. We get it. You wanted black and Hispanic people to take the COVID vaccine. Me, you know, I'm a better journalist, a better analyst, a more honest guy, and I'm smarter than you. So all COVID, if you look at my reporting, instead of trying to shame two quote unquote minority races into injecting themselves, uh, I was doing reporting on the history of Pfizer, you know, Robert Kennedy clips, which were great, explaining the liability shields that they had, you know, uh, everything about it, the fact that it was in the Pfizer and Moderna mRNA, it wasn't like a traditional vaccine, at least educating your audience and asking questions can help people come to their own conclusions rather than trying to shove a product down their throat and yelling at Louis Farrakhan for, for um, not wanting people to get it, who I'm sure he's called anti-Semitic at least five times. I'm not sure. It's probably more like 500, but who knows? I don't really watch his show, so I have no idea. Speaking of which, so when you look at this post from Jeremy Schnoring, um, you know, trying to say that you, if you deny the moon landing or you think that America was wrong for atomic weapons against Japan or you think George Bush was behind 9-11, you actually hate this country. He's not just saying like you're wrong or you're lying. Like you hate America if you think the moon landing wasn't real. It's like that's so dumb. He's talking about Candace Owens, I think, because Candace said she's not sure if she believes the moon landing is real. The sign of a true patriot is believing everything your government does, but he's really taking veiled threats at Tucker Carlson because for some reason, Jeremy thinks that he could beat Tucker Carlson in anything in life that he's more honest or more accurate. And Tucker recently has done two out of the three things that he was talking about. Here's 
recent clips of Tucker not saying George Bush was behind 9-11, but basically questioning Building 7 and also saying he thinks it's evil to drop bombs on innocent civilians. A stance that obviously people of Jeremy Schnoring's ilk do not believe. That's why they justify the dropping of tens of thousands of bombs in the modern day on civilians and children. And they say that God knows what they're saying. I don't listen to the schnor schnorbore. But uh, here's, uh, <laughs> here's Tucker doing two things that Jeremy says means you hate the country. But if you say like, what what actually happened with Building Seven? Like that is weird, right? It doesn't like what right, is that? Right. If you were to say something like that on television, they'd flip out. You know, I've spent the last eighty years defending dropping nuclear weapons on civilians. Like, are you joking? Right. That's just like prima facie evil. Yeah. If you can't, well, if we hadn't done that, then this, that, the other thing, that was actually a great savings. Like, no, it's wrong to drop nuclear weapons on people. So. I'm just curious. It's like, l listen, I'm not trying to over speculate, but what what type of person thinks that you hate America if you question the government's narrative on moon landing and 9-11? And what type of person thinks that you can't possibly love America? You hate this country if you think it's wrong to kill innocent civilians or, you know, question any war because they've been doing this for decades. Everybody knows, especially the older generation and the younger generation who's researched they know that back in the day, you were a traitor if you didn't agree with the wars. Like they sent tens or hundreds of thousands of people to die at Vietnam. I don't know the exact death count, but I've heard it's one of the most gruesome foot wars that we've ever had in America. And while they were just sending our soldiers to get slaughtered in Vietnam and both, both sides had people dying, they told you if you don't support the Vietnam War, you're a traitor, you hate America. The same thing that con artist Pharisee Jeremy Schnoring is doing uh, of the Antichrist spirit. They just do all this subversion and projection and all these things that they're doing. And they're like, oh, you can't possibly love America if you don't support the wars and, and what we're doing. And it's like when it was all said and done, I even watched a mainstream normie television thing on Vietnam a couple years ago. And even on mainstream television, they're admitting that Vietnam possibly could have been avoided or what did it really do? I mean, it was it was one of the saddest things I've ever watched in the last couple of years. They were sitting down with veterans who lost all their friends and all their uh, the members of their, uh, I don't know if it would be called platoon or, or unit. And he's like sitting there at the camera at like 90 years old, like crying saying, was it really like, you know, this is the hardest part for me. It's not just the fact that I lost all these people. It's not the fact of like all the trauma of the things that I induced in Vietnam. But the saddest part for me is wondering, was this even a righteous war? Were we even here for the right reasons? Did this even do anything? And I mean, like, I don't, I don't cry often and I'm like, I'm getting a little sad now, but like, it really did make me sad. Like, I was like, that's so sad. That's so sad that we send tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of people to die. And not only do they have to watch their friends die, not only do they have to kill people, not only do they have to watch people around them get killed and be tra traumatized for the rest of their life, but then they have to sit there and wonder because our government's been so corrupt because of people like Jeremy Schnoring who say that it's evil and you hate America if you question these things. You know, they have to sit there and wonder, was all that even worth it? Did I even do the right thing? And it's just disgusting. What type of person would be like that? Hmm. And what type of Christian? I know he's a self-proclaimed Christian. And I want to be I want to disclaimer. I don't like to be the Christian that's like, oh, you're not Christian. If you do this, it's really annoying. I like to live like if I could live a flawless 10 years, then I'll start talking shit to everybody. But until then, I don't like to be the guy that says, oh, you can't do this if you're a Christian. This and that. Yeah, I know what the Bible says. And I know if you're doing the wrong thing, it's not ideal. But what I will point out is Jeremy Boring calls himself the God King. I don't know very many Christians, no matter how flawed or sinned you are, that you consider yourself God. I mean, it goes against the whole religion. You're not God. Humble yourself before Christ, Jeremy, just like I have to. But I would never, I don't feel comfortable. Like even when people say like, you look like Jesus, it makes me feel uncomfortable because I'm not Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is better than me in every single way. And I know like people think I look like paintings of him when, when my hair's down. It makes me feel uncomfortable when people say that. I don't like it. I don't think it's funny. I think it's sacrilegious and it honestly annoys me, not because it's not a good thing to look like. And I know we're all made in the image of Christ, but I don't feel comfortable. I'm not a God. I don't think I'm God. I know I'm not God. I'm also not a king. I understand you can call yourself king if you're really good at sports or whatever. But like, why would a Christian who says that it's anti-Semitic to say Christ is king in certain ways? It's a dog whistle. Now, now you, declaring your Lord and Savior as a Christian is a dog whistle, possibly, depending how you say it. But him calling himself a God, he doesn't seem concerned about. Is this guy a Christian? Is he an antichrist? Is he a Pharisee? I don't think I, 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 I'm, I'm leaning towards antichrist vibes because... It's just not making sense. Like I would 
Imagine a Christian that tries to gaslight you into thinking declaring your Lord and Savior is king is anti-Semitism. But then he calls himself God. Very weird. So weird that I'm going to bring up the receipts. He said on the left, how is saying Christ is king anti-Semitic the same way it beca anything becomes anti-Semitic when it is used for the purpose of expressing anti-Semitism? It's like, how does a shovel become a murder weapon when it's used to murder someone? It isn't that hard. So Jeremy's like, everything could be anti-Semitic when it's anti-Semitic. And it's like, now words are weapons. Now your word, now declaring the name of your Lord and Savior is like hitting someone with a shovel, according to Jeremy. And he's a libtard, total phony, total fraud, total con artist, total... Jezebel, Antichrist, Pharisee spirit, trying to gaslight Christians into thinking the name of their Lord and Savior can be hate speech because words are like weapons. Yet words are not weapons when he compares himself to God on his own website. It says he's this co-CEO and the God King of Daily Wire. He loves calling himself God, 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 God. Why do you think you're God, Jeremy? Because you run a sneaky media company where you don't want Candace Owens to say certain things. Why do you think you're a God? Because you pay people in this worldly you know, world that we're stuck in and you own a bunch of people, you know, that, 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 that are employed to you and you get to tell them what to say and what to do. And then you say, you don't tell them what to say or do it's their job. But then, you know, when something happens where they say something that you don't like, then, then you're like, you know, we employ Candace Owens for her opinions, not mine, but then you admit that it's not that way. And that if someone says things that pass the line that you want them to say in your opinions and you fire them. And it sounds like I'm just talking, but like with everything, of course I have the receipts. Here's Jeremy Boring saying the exact opposite thing he tweeted months prior, uh, pretty much just exposing himself as a fraud. Let's play the clip. But the Daily Wire is a publication, right? We publish, we curate. I pay people to speak. I'm not just a platform where everybody can kind of build their own account and say the things that they want to say. I, I pay people. And I'm not going to pay people to say things that go beyond certain lines of what I believe. Why would I do that? Just a few months ago, the CEO of Daily Wire, who just said that, said, in my current capacity, I cannot fire Candace Owens. That's something Ben and I have in common since he is also not an executive in the company and cannot hire or fire people. But even if we could, we would not fire Candace because of another thing we have in common, a desire not to regulate the speech of our hosts, even when we disagree with them. Candace is paid to give her opinion, not mine or Ben's. Unless those opinions run afoul of the law or she violates the terms of her contract in some way, her job is secure and she is welcome at Daily Wire. So that's just a clip of him months later, like he came in a Twitter space and he goes, I, I pay people. I pay people. OK, I, I pay people to say things. OK, I pay. I pay. I'm God King. I pay. I pay. I'm the God. Shut up, Pharisee. You're not. OK. Yeah, we get it. You pay people so they do and, and they don't have the freedom to be themselves like they normally would if, if you didn't pay them to do these things. But that's exactly the opposite of what you said months prior when you said we're paying Candace for her opinion, not mine and Ben. Does he think nobody sees this stuff? It's crazy. And to those who are saying he's just joking about the God King. Well, he's not joking about saying that. I'm going to just let everybody see it again saying that Christ is king, declaring your Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, is anti-Semitism. It's hate speech because words are weapons. So he's not joking about that. And even joking, calling yourself God, is not funny. It's sacrilegious. I'm not God. He's not God. I don't joke about myself being God. It's not It's not a joke. It's like sarcasm for people that think it's sarcasm. Like, haha, yeah, I'm I'm, jo I'm joking so much, I'm going to put it on the website and call myself that all the time. He loves the thought of him being the god of his little world, which is crumbling and collapsing around him because the only semi-decent person near him is Matt Walsh, who constantly has to make excuses for every stupid thing that him and Ben say all the time. I'm going to make this point, and then I'm probably going to keep this one pretty brief. I'm going to try to keep it under 40 minutes. I might answer some questions. Here's my entire issue and the reason I'm talking about this and the reason it matters outside of what Candace or Tucker or Jeremy says, okay? there I, I've said this a bunch, but it needs to be repeated. There are hate speech laws being passed in America right now, not just by Democrats, but also Republicans are in on it. Trump has passed them. DeSantis has passed them. Kemp has passed them. Youngkin has passed them. Ben Shapiro has tweeted some of the hate speech phrases that he believes. He believes it's anti-Semitism to say that anybody of his race and religion likes Israel as much as America, even though Ben's entire show seems to be about that. But you can't say either side of it because everything's anti-Semitism. And then they're going so far as these speech laws are being passed. The word Jesus is in the speech laws. You're not allowed to say 
Jews killed Jesus. That's a hate speech, anti-Semitism offense, according to legislation and law that Republicans are passing. I don't care what people say, if they say it's the Romans, this and that. I don't, I mean, obviously as a Christian, I don't agree, but even if Ben Shapiro wants to pretend like Jesus was just a wanderer and a criminal who got put down because of his troubles or whatever Ben Shapiro said on Joe Rogan, you could find the clip of what he thinks of Jesus. I'm not trying to stop Ben Shapiro from saying that. I'm not passing a blasphemy law for him not to be able to say that, but there's blasphemy laws being passed in America for Judaism, non-religious Jewish people and the country of Israel. And it's being passed by Zionist Republicans who take donor money to do it and then write a bunch of articles and call you anti-Semitic for saying that they're doing what I just said that they're doing. So they're trying to say the truth is hate speech in some cases. And then Jeremy's trying to conflate even Jesus is king can be anti-Semitic sometimes. As that word is being passed through law, Jeremy weaponizes it and uses it against other people and never addresses the fact that it's being passed through law. And the only reason that Matt Walsh has recently addressed this is because on Twitter, he's extremely unpopular like Jeremy Schnoring is. And Matt felt bad and felt weird. So he's like, all right, I guess I'll do a video on this because I'm, you know, I'm clearly wrong and everybody seems to know it except for me or whatever. So that just shows you that people waking up and not being cattle and eating fodder feed from Donald Trump and these people who just try to give you low tier fodder, uh, this shows that it works. So Jeremy on Twitter now, everybody's disagreeing with them, but it's not like a petty Candace Tucker. I don't care about that stuff. I care about the speech laws that are being passed in America that have the word of my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, while Pharisees like uh, Jeremy Schnoring are trying to say declaring that Christ is king can be hate speech while hate speech laws are being passed through legislation in America against the name of my Lord and Savior. So that's really what I care about. And everything that Jeremy says, it's all just weird, sneaky tactics where it's like right now we're giving 60, 70 billion dollars to Ukraine or 50 billion, 40 billion, 100 billion. I lost count of how much we've given hundreds of billions. I don't know what's going to this. The TikTok's getting banned. Of course, Israel's going to get money. They always do. They've made hundreds of billions of dollars off of American taxpayers. And but you can't say it. Of course, that's anti-Semitism, but it's true. But anyway, in general, like while all this is happening, of course, Jeremy is going to tweet and it's like, oh, if you questioned World War II narratives around what, what was it like Japan, you hate America. If you didn't want that, it's like there's a debate to be had whether we should have dropped bombs or not. I'm not like personally, I'm not I'm not really like a big like let's kill a bunch of innocent civilians for a banker war. But if Jeremy's that way. I'm not going to say he hates America just because of that. I'm going to have an intellectual discussion and I'm going to have to put my case on the line of like why we shouldn't have done that and how we should have stopped Japan in order to fix America or save America. Like there's a conversation to be had, but just saying you hate America if you disagree with that war, to me, one, it's a shot at Tucker Carlson. And the reason that he doesn't like Tucker Carlson, besides the fact that Tucker constantly talks about how phony Ben Shapiro and, and his, you know, they are, which is true. Um, it's also because Tucker is now questioning things. He's questioning the wars. He's question he's been one of the biggest critics in mainstream media questioning war with Iran. I remember, and my audience on Facebook hated me for it, in 2018, I think it was, 2018, Tucker did a whole piece when, when Trump was ramping up war with Iran, and he said, Trump, don't go to war with Iran. It's a trap. The neocons and the war hawks want you to do it. Don't do it. Don't listen to John Bolton. And I shared that Tucker Carlson clip in 2018 on my Facebook page. And I remember all the boomers on Facebook were so mad at me. They're like, shut up, Tucker, you're wrong, blah, 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 because boomers have been brainwashed with this war narrative. And I asked somebody, and I'm not saying all boomers, we love boomers here. I'm just saying, I asked on Twitter, I said, why are, why are boomers like always so mad when you try to tell them something that's true that they're just constantly wrong about? And someone made a great analogy. They said, Boomers are like Hufflepuff, which is one of the Harry Potter teams. They grew up in a high trust society. They're used to trusting everything because when they grew up, you could walk down the street, ride your bike and say, hey, Mr. Johnson. And then, you know, the kid throw it's like leave it to Beaver. He gives the mail. We don't live in that world anymore. And to be honest, that was an illusion for a long time while they were planning the world we live in now. So I think that may be why. And I'm not trying to be rude. I'm just trying to figure out the psychology of it. I think boomers trust everything that the government says, which is half of the reason that why we're in this mess right now, but they can't crack the habit. So they just spiral and get mad at everybody else who questions anything. And it's like, look at the country. Now we don't live and leave it to beaver world. You can't trust everybody the way that you trusted them growing up. And to be honest, in the seventies, eighties and nineties, yes, it was still a high trust country, but it was shifting towards a not high trust country. And the reason we got to this point is because you didn't pay attention then. So it's time to pay attention now. But so many people get so mad because it's like, we got to do this because my pastor told me or whatever. And it's like, 
well, maybe your pastor got co-opted. Maybe he didn't, but it's like, you know, if you study the, the, the history of Zionism in America and why Christians feel that way, this is not thousands of years old. This is not even hundreds of years old. It's like uh, around 100 years old that this was put into certain versions of the Bible and footnotes, and they really push for the mega churches to feel this way about this, to do this. But if you go back to the greatest and most studied and celebrated Christians of Christian history, you can read their writings and none of them felt this way. So it's like because the mega pastor that has 50,000, you know, private jets feels this way and he's getting paid off to feel this way. Now all the Christians feel this way, but they can't seem to want to think about it. And, and, but what I'm just saying is Tucker has been consistent with questioning things, questioning the war with Iran. This was four or five years ago, six years ago, because if you study American history, this has been building up for 20 years. You could find foreign leaders coming to America trying to push these wars before 9-11. So a lot of this stuff is related. I'm not saying George Bush did 9-11, he's in on 9-11, but I do have questions about, okay, so then we go and get Osama bin Laden, and then we end up in Libya, and then we end up in Syria, and then we end up in like uh, other countries that have nothing to do with Al-Qaeda to push this other agenda, and some of it backfired. Is it anti-American to say that killing Muammar Gaddafi led to a slave trade in Libya because that uh, allegedly happened. Even Newsweek reports on it. But can you say that or no? Is, is Jeremy boring? He's got that stupid fake uh, neocon mentality of like every every everything the government does is cool. And that's why people like Ben Shapiro push the government narrative about vaccines and the government narrative about masks. And you know what I'm saying? It's like, yeah, there were certain things he had a problem with. But during 2020, like listening to Ben Shapiro, I'd, I'd rather listen to Rachel Maddow and The View on loop at a higher decibel at five times speed, which is literally like water torture. But it's like Ben sucks. You know what I'm saying? Like, oh, get the vaccine, black people. Oh, the, why is Louis Farrakhan telling you not to? Why is it? Why are you wrong about so many things that actually matter? And why am I two years ahead of you? Am I so much smarter than you? Or are you just dishonest? I'm not really sure. But either way, there's no strategic reason for me to listen to you rather than just make breakdown videos showing everybody what a phony you are. And you know what? Speaking of which, I'm going to play it again, just so people could see it again. How is a man who got the pharmaceutical COVID vaccine wrong in his own words? He said later he wore this little jean jacket. It looked like he bought it at Oshkosh Bagosh kids store or something. He puts on this jean jacket with facial hair and he's like, oh my gosh, listen, oh my gosh, I'm not wrong because the government and Pfizer lied and I believe them. Why do you believe Pfizer and the government? Oh, I know why. Ask me, little Oshkosh Bagosh Gwen Shapiro fraud. Uh, it's because not only do you not ask questions, but you shame and talk trash about everybody who does ask questions. So here's that compilation again, just to show you what's going on over there. Right, this is the game that is played by so many corrupt commentators just asking questions. I don't have to show you evidence that something terrible is happening. I don't have to actually demonstrate how the thing is happening. I don't have to tell you who the problem is. Wink, wink. But... I can just tell you right now that there is, a but even, if, and, and if I'm asked about it, hey, I'm just asking questions. I think that you don't care enough to know or know enough to care. I think that the vast majority of people who are in the just asking questions business have an answer that they want to suggest, but they know there's no evidence for it. So instead they hide behind just asking questions. In other words, they're completely full of shit. And we have seen a tremendous amount of vaccine hesitancy, unfortunately, in the black and Hispanic community. Okay, black America, only 67% of black Americans say they definitely will get the vaccine or probably get the vaccine. So the black community has tremendous vaccine hesitancy. Okay, that is a real problem. The people who should be ripped up and down right now are people like Louis Farrakhan, who's literally going out there and telling his millions of followers that the COVID vaccine is a vial of death. Have you seen any co media coverage of this? If a, if a major conservative figure who had met with a bunch of members of Congress were out there literally telling people that the COVID vaccine was a vial of death, you know that would be at the front of every single newspaper, right? Conservatives deny vaccine efficacy. And yet here was Louis Farrakhan doing just that. Democratic members of Congress have met with this guy. They continue to meet with this guy. Have you seen a headline about this? It's a great uh, presentation of the false paradigm. You know, left and right, red and blue. It never matters if you're being led by people like this, like people like Jeremy, <sighs> woo, snoring, uh, who tell you, Oh, you hate America if you question the moon landing. You hate America if you question the war methods. You hate America if you're if you're like Tucker Carlson and you question this. It's like, no, you don't. And I just want to make this point. I'm going to read a few comments and keep this pretty brief. 
Uh, there's multiple things that I'm trying to accomplish with this video. One, the days of the neocon war hawk, you know, some would say Zionist and, you know, regardless of who you are, I'm just speaking at, like what I'm saying is what I'm saying, not what you think I'm saying. Don't straw man what I'm saying. Not all, but a lot of people in that category of the groups that I just mentioned, whatever you want to call them, they're always trying to gaslight you into thinking that questioning the war agenda makes you anti-American, whether it's Vietnam, whether it's Japan, whether it's this, whether it's Ukraine, whether it's Russia. You know, there's different people who feel different ways, but you'll see those type of people that many refer to as neoconservatives or neocons. And they'll always try to just shame you into asking questions. Hundreds of thousands of people are dying. Don't ask questions. Just believe the government, America. You know, George Bush sends your kids off the war. Don't ask questions. Just believe George Bush. And you're a conspiracy theorist if you disagree. You know, hundreds of thousands of Ukrainians and Russians are dying over there. And hundreds of billions of American taxpayer dollars are paying to fund the war. And the second we stop paying, they'll probably have to start stop fighting. So we're a huge reason that that war is going. You know, don't ask questions about it. You know, hundreds of billions of dollars over the last 50 years or so have gone to to, to Israel. But don't ask questions. What do you get in return? Uh, hate speech laws that say that it's anti-Semitic to question where your money's going? Oh, yeah, that sounds like a fair deal. And Jeremy Boring even goes so as far as a Christian to say that the phrase Christ is king can be like a shovel and, and words are weapons now and it can be anti-Semitic. You call yourself God king. That's sacrilegious. You're not God, bro. And also, even a bigger deal than that, Let's talk about antichrist, anti-Christians, you know, Let, can we talk about that? We always talk about this, that, and, and just like with the racial narrative that BLM was pushing, eventually people got tired of it because it's like, I get it. You're going to call me a racist a million times for existing. I wake up, you say I'm racist. I breathe, you say I'm racist. I can't pay rent. You say I'm racist. My kid's five years old. He's racist. Like eventually people stop caring about that word because it's being weaponized and wielded by people who are misusing it, abusing it, and using it for wrong reasons. And that's how the word anti-Semitism is now. I listened to the Candace Owens interview where she interviewed Rabbi Barclay, and he said anti-Semitism st started thousands of years ago at the time of Jesus and his disciples. So it's not hard for me to figure out where anti-Semitism was created. It was when Jesus came and was like, you know, this is how I feel. And people said no. And then they're like, wow, that's anti-Semitic. His followers are anti-Semitic. This is an They think Christians are anti-Semitic. Not everybody, but I'm just saying, I'm like, can we talk about anti-Christianity, anti-Christ? Can we talk about countries that are bombing Christian churches? Can we talk about countries that we fund, like Israel, that are funding Muslims to attack Armenian Christians? Can we talk about that? Can we talk about how American taxpayer dollars fund to Ukraine and it becomes less Christian and the leader of Ukraine, Zelensky, starts banning Catholic uh, churches and he starts passing laws that make Ukraine like San Francisco? We could talk about anti-Semitism, but let's start talking about anti-Christian and anti-Christ. But Jeremy doesn't want to talk about anti-Christian, anti-Christ vibes because he has anti-Christ vibes. He has Pharisee vibes, Jeremy Boring. So he doesn't want to talk about any of that. He just wants to weaponize the word anti-Semitism against Christians while he mysteriously says nothing about the hate speech laws and the blasphemy laws being passed through American legislation that include the name Jesus in them and also limit criticism of the number one recipient of foreign aid in the last 50, 60 years. So we could give hundreds of billions of dollars to a foreign country, but then we lose our First Amendment right to have a conversation about it. That's crazy. And they always straw man it with these crazy protests and these stupid people at college campus. I saw the thing at Columbian University. The, the, the lady holding a sign is a scumbag. I'm not defending people that hold signs like that, that, that call for nasty stuff like that. I agree with everybody complaining about it. She's a scumbag. But that doesn't change the fact of the hate speech laws. What if somebody does that to a Christian? Do we get Christian speech laws? Of course not. You know, nothing ever happens. So, you know, we're reframing the conversation now because people like Jeremy Boring are just two-faced weasels and they constantly try to wield their power, call themselves God, and then wield hate speech words against Christ and then act like they're some sort of great Christian. He's a piece of garbage, and I'm tired of these people. The opposition is controlled, including Trump, including DeSantis. The entire Republican Party is passing these laws, while all the fraudsters and conservative media just cover this stuff up and just say you're crazy. And like Tucker, you know, say what you want about Tucker. I don't believe everything he says. I don't trust him completely in the sense of like, I've heard things he says that I completely disagree with. But 
when I listen to Tucker Carlson for an hour or I listen to Jeremy for an hour, Tucker's way more honest. He questions the wars. He, he knows what's going on in media with fake free speechers like Jeremy. And uh, he talks about it. And that's what he's mad at. So he's trying to shame people that have questions. How could you not have questions? We, we got four years of Donald Trump and it ended in a pharmaceutical lockdown. Why wouldn't you ask questions? I think people who support Trump are stupider than people who ask questions about Trump. And I'm not talking about Rachel Maddow on The View. I'm talking about conservatives who voted for Donald Trump just to get hate speech laws that include the name Jesus and, and a pharmaceutical lockdown where Donald Trump was running around like Bill Gates on heroin. I'm, I'm just using a metaphor. I'm not saying that like literally he was on heroin, but like, you know, he's like Bill Gates on steroids being like, oh, my vaccine's so great. Why wouldn't you have a question about your party? DeSantis flies to a foreign country to pl pass blasphemy laws. Why wouldn't you have a question? Speaker Mike Johnson is, is allowing Democrats to wave foreign flags as they give tens of billions of dollars to a foreign country. Why wouldn't you ask questions? So, you know, I'm tired of these scammers and scumbags trying to use their money and power to stop people from asking questions. It's not going to work anymore, dude. And just to show you, like Tucker, you know, this is probably one of the reasons that he said that. Tucker recently had this little bit on Joe Rogan. I covered it in a different video. You can go watch that if you want. It's like 20, 30 minutes long. But he said, I, I realized that most people in conservative media, they're total frauds. This is what Tucker told Joe Rogan. He goes, it's not like a few people. It's like everybody. They, they're all fake. He's like, it, it, it's, it's baffling because you don't, it sounds almost like you're being hateful, but it's like if, if you made an entire career off of we're pro free speech, let us speak on a college campus and you're saying all these things, but you actually don't mean any of them. It's kind of crazy. And that's what Tucker talked about. And I want to show you how Jeremy is this thing. If Jeremy always said, we're a publisher, not a platform, we're publishing people to hold a line that we believe. And if you cross that line of what we believe, we're going to fire you. I don't have a problem with that. But people have pointed out and Ben Shapiro has been getting called out because when New York Times did this and they said that we don't want to publish Tom Cotton or some some Republican. I can't remember who it is. We don't want to publish his view. OK, I don't like that because I want them to publish it. But what is New York Times doing? They're saying we're a publisher, not a platform. You can have those views somewhere else, just not here. And Ben Shapiro complained about it. He says it's your duty to put out opinions that you disagree with it. Why is it New York Times and Washington Post's opinion or, or why is it their job to put out opinions they disagree with? But it's not your job. And I'm going to play this clip again. And I want people to listen because the first thing I said happened months later. And the tweet that I read happened months prior. They are exactly who they've been talking trash about the entire time. They cry when New York Times won't publish opinions that go further than the pale that they want. But they do the same thing with Candace Owens. And this clip, the people that are like, duh, 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 uh, appreciate you. But here, here, here's a suggestion because I do it myself as well. That's how I know this stuff because I don't just talk. Of course, I do when I'm live because that's my job. That's my show. But when I'm not doing that, you know what I do? I listen. I learn. Some guy, I just want to say this real quick on my Instagram page. He types all this stuff and he goes, anomaly, you know, blah, blah, blah. And he's like five years behind me. And I said, dude, you don't know what you're talking about, whatever. And he goes, you're right. I don't know what I'm talking about. I'm not as smart as you. And I don't think I'm smarter than him. I just pay attention. But he's like, I'm, I don't know what I'm talking about. Then why are you talking, bro? Imagine being like, I don't know what I'm talking about. Then shut up. I don't walk into a room and be like, I don't know anything. I don't know what I'm talking about. Then why are you yelling over people learning? Like, I don't, it's like some people I just don't understand. I was like, I don't care how much you know. I don't think I know it all. I don't think I'm smarter than you. But like, why are you yelling? Why are you telling me that I'm wrong while you're saying you don't know what you're talking about? Like, that seems crazy to me. So this is my suggestion to people that don't know. Listen intently on what Jeremy says here months later and then months ago when they said that we're not paying Candace Owens for our opinions. We're paying her for her opinions. And then keep in mind that they were saying, Ben Shapiro, that New York Times sh should, as a publisher, publish other opinions than theirs. That's their duty. You know, so it, it shows that they expect other media companies to do that, but they're not willing to do that. All I'm asking is just be honest about it. If you don't want to publish things like he's saying here, say that months prior. Don't lie to everybody and act like you're something you're not. But the Daily Wire is a publication, right? We publish, we curate. I pay people to speak. I'm not just a platform where everybody can kind of build their own account and say the things that they want to say. I, I pay people 
And I'm not going to pay people to say things that go beyond certain lines of what I believe. Why would I do that? Just a few months ago, the CEO of Daily Wire, who just said that, said, in my current capacity, I cannot fire Candace Owens. That's something Ben and I have in common since he is also not an executive in the company and cannot hire or fire people. But even if we could, we would not fire Candace because of another thing we have in common, a desire not to regulate the speech of our hosts, even when we disagree with them. Candace is paid to give her opinion, not mine or Ben's. Unless those opinions run afoul of the law or she violates the terms of her contract in some way, her job is secure and she is welcome at Daily Wire. Enough said, if you're paying attention. I'm going to keep this short because I think videos under 45 minutes are a little bit easier to watch and easier to share. So this is what I'll say. God bless everybody. I appreciate everybody. I appreciate you. I appreciate conservatives and liberals and whatever, but the truth is I'm tired of just talking about liberals all the time because our party is sending tens of billions of dollars to foreign countries as some of the biggest CEOs of the biggest media companies are trying to gaslight their audience into thinking that Tucker Carlson is a bad guy and he hates America because he's questioning war narratives, not just because Tucker's questioning the Japan narrative. It's because Tucker's questioning the modern narrative of Ukraine and Israel and Iran, and Tucker is providing value. And they're doing the same thing that they've always done, which is try to gaslight conservatives and Republicans into thinking you're not a patriot and you're not pro-America and you hate this country if you question the war narrative. It's not true. We don't live and leave it to beaver land. We don't live in the world that, you, that the boomers thought they grew up in the 50s and 60s. It's not that way. Unfortunately, it's just not on every level. It sucks, but it is what it is. You know, let's enjoy our lives and just deal with what it is because it's still a great country and I still appreciate America. But what we're not going to do is shame the patriots who do real journalism. And this is the type of stuff that they always do. They control both sides of politics and they use different words to shut people down when they can't explain why they're wrong. They'll call you a racist, but most of the time they can't explain why because they don't know what they're talking about. They'll call you a sexist for believing in what the Bible and religious texts say about the man and woman relationship. Uh, you know, they'll call you a sexist, but they won't have to explain it because they want everyone to be feminist. They'll call you a xenophobe if you want to secure the border. They'll call you an anti-Semite if you do or say anything ever, especially question the war narrative that's getting hundreds of billions of dollars. Uh, they'll call you an anti-vaxxer if you know the truth about the pharmaceutical industry and you do real reporting that Ben Shapiro doesn't seem capable of doing. Candace Owens did great pharmaceutical reporting, but she's not at Daily Wire anymore. She was the only person there that I really even liked because she was two years, three, four years ahead of that narrative. And they'll have a word for everything. Climate, call you a climate denier. You know, you deny the climate. What are you talking about? Like just, just because you think that making these little changes in America while China and India close their ears and don't listen to you, now I'm denying the climate. You're denying the climate. Look at these countries where they're doing cloud seeding all the time for the last 30 years. And then they have some crazy event. I'm not saying it's a direct relation to the cloud seeding like that day. They seeded it and it flooded. But the thing is, when you play God, Jeremy God King Boring, and I know it's not him, but when you play God and you manipulate the weather, you can't control the, the volcanoes. You can't necessarily control the hurricanes and the storms. And there's some things above us. And it's, it's a beautiful thing. It's called God. It's called nature. It's called earth. It's a beautiful thing to know. Yeah, I'm great, but I'm not that great. Yeah, I'm pretty strong, but I'm not a volcano strong. You know, it's it's okay to humble yourself and realize that you're nothing compared to these things. So when you manipulate all these things and try to play God King for a purposeful term, you know, it's everything doesn't work out the way you want it to. So, you know, this is an experience for the left and the right, I think, where they want to play God. They want to shame everybody asking questions and they want to call people conspiracy theorists, deniers and uh you know, whatever Jeremy's saying, like you hate America, if you question these narratives, it, it, you don't love America just because you fully believe the moon landing, especially when NASA is getting tens of billions of dollars a year. And you got their oldest active astronauts like Don Pettit saying, we'd go back to the moon in a nanosecond, except we used to have the technology. We just deleted it. And it's a painful process to build back again. Like it doesn't mean you love America if you don't think that's a little odd. I'm not saying you don't have to believe the moon landing. As somebody that has my questions about the whole situation, I would never say you love America if you think it's fake and you have to hate America if you think it's real. There's millions of people that love America and don't hate America and they think the moon landing's real. There's millions of people that love America and they're patriots and they don't think it's real. I don't think loving America, it comes from the moon, your, your take on the moon landing. I also don't think loving America comes from your opinion on the Japan war. 
And I also don't think loving America comes from how much you do or don't believe the 9-11 narrative. Like that's not what love of America means. That's not where it stems from. And trying to gaslight people into thinking it's not even possible to like America with those three things is really like a projection shield because a lot of the stuff that the God King does or the self-proclaimed God King Pharisees, Antichrist spirit guy who wants to say that it's hate speech to declare, you know, our Lord and Savior's name. Uh, you know, I think it's a lot of projection and shielding where it's like some things that these people are doing is not necessarily pro-America. So they have to spiral and gaslight people into thinking that people doing righteous stuff are the bad ones. Like, you know, Tucker Carlson's been in media his whole life. And Tucker Carlson, the last couple of years, is the best Tucker Carlson we've ever had. He's been, he used to work at CNN. He, he's got family that worked in media. He admits that he was wrong about the wars. He comes clean on podcasts and said, I was lying about these wars. I feel so terrible. I was tricked. I, everybody told me I was right. This is the best Tucker Carlson we've ever had. Candace Owens, she made documentaries about the pharmaceutical industry when Ben Shapiro was selling the vaccine to black and Hispanic people. You know, she's out here doing really bold work about a lot of stuff where, in my opinion, as somebody that has always liked Candace, but I can't say I listen to everything she says, uh, I'm more impressed by her over the last two years in a year than I ever have been personally. I think she's she's doing more bold and more meaningful work than she's ever done. And then all of a sudden they have a problem with it, right? Now people like Jeremy Boring are taking shots at Candace and and Tucker. It's like these are this is they're the in the best version they've ever been. You know, something's not going on. We're not seeing eye to eye in this party. And it's not infighting and it's not bad to point this stuff out. Cause by not actually paying attention, it doesn't matter if we win an election, if Donald Trump is a pharmaceutical salesman who has no problem doing socialism and communism for his government buddies running around printing money and calling the vaccine one of the greatest achievements of mankind. Like you, the, the real rigged election is the fact that the donors and the swamp has apparently even control over Donald Trump, who pretends to be an outsider, yet still puts Lindsey Graham on a stage, agree, says Mike Johnson's doing a good job, he said recently, and wants to give the money to Ukraine and say that it's a loan that they don't have to pay back, which means they won't pay it back. Trump's really not that different. So just dunking on the left all the time is not going to fix our country. I understand that. Tucker understands that. Candace understands that. Most Trump supporters understand that, whether we see eye to eye on certain things. And I think that that bothers people, you know, in Republican media, because, you know, I don't think someone that refers to themselves as God cares that much about much more than money, power and control over whoever they have control over. So, you know, there's a reason that we're all talking about this stuff. I don't like drama. I'm not looking to like argue with people, but I'm not going to listen to a self-proclaimed Christian God King basically gaslight people into thinking Jesus's de declaration is anti-Semitic, yet them calling themselves God isn't a problem. Like, have some self-awareness, bro. <sighs> Woo! Snoring. Jeremy, snoring. Boring. You're boring. You're snoring. Matt Walsh is the only halfway decent person left over there. If he ever leaves, nobody's going to care about the Daily Wire anymore because Matt's honest, like, trying to probably figure out, is it worth it? Let me, you know, I almost went into a Missy Elliott thing. Is it worth it? Let me, never mind. I got to go. Anyway, appreciate you guys. I'm trying to keep this under 50 minutes. God bless you. I think my message is pretty clear. Let me know what you think in the comment section. And God is great. I love my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I'm just trying to say it publicly now. I don't, this isn't a religious show. It's a political show. But I'm trying to say I love my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ now before people like Jeremy Schnoring say that it's hate speech again. I'm trying to get my jesus declarations peacefully in here respectfully to everybody else before republicans make it illegal with the hate speech laws they're passing and then media companies don't talk about it god bless you god bless your family god bless america god bless the world thank you check out the links at the end if you want to support i appreciate you Hey, what's going on my friends? Just a few ways to stay in touch and support if you'd like to. The first way is dreamrare.com. We have blue beanies, black beanies, pink hats, other colored hats, freedom versus tyranny shirts, stay blessed long sleeve, God is great long sleeve, and lots of more cool items coming soon. Dreamrare.com, check out the shop to support. Everything's made in the United States, handpicked by me. Patreon.com slash rare talk for $5 a month. You can help support me, support the show. If you haven't noticed, unlike other channels, I don't work with very very many sponsors, sometimes none at all. And part of the way I'm able to do that is with the dreamrare.com shop and patreon.com slash rare talk. So thank you guys for keeping this show free, unimpeded, uninterrupted. 